Hi, Patrick here. I have a cheetah wheel view. And uh, welcome to Tubi Tuesday. Uh, and we have reached the end of the, our run as far as uh, looking back at a man called Hawk. Um, this is episode 13. And unfortunately, this was the last of the series. Um, it only ran 13 episodes. So this is it. This is the last one. And this episode is called Life After Death. And uh, so um, I'll tell you the story. I'll talk about the, the, the cast members. Because this one's stacked. I'll be honest with you. This is this is pretty star, star packed. That's for sure. A lot of familiar faces in this one. Um, so uh, the story opens up with Hawk uh, arriving to... He hears of a friend's daughter who has uh, overdosed and he has come out to see what he could do to help and she's uh, being taken to the hospital and um, so he's going to go over there to see what he can do. So as he's on his way to the hospital, we cut over to, uh, uh, we cut over to a young couple, uh, uh, Lois and Mitch. Um, they're an interracial couple and uh, they're fighting. Um, uh, um, uh, Lois has been, is really stressed we, as before we cut to them, we see that she had mailed out a package and she seems really nervous about it. She comes back and her and Mitch have a, have a tussle. Uh, it seems like Lois is pregnant and, and, uh, but, uh, 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 Mitch isn't really quite ready for it. They're they're only in the early twenties, so he's 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 nervous about it. About having a kid, he wants to take care of it, and she's gonna. She Michelle tells him that it's gonna happen one way, you know, with him or without him. Now he wants to do the right thing, but he's just nervous. Well, Michelle or yeah, Michelle or Lois takes her jacket and she dashes off to her parents' house. And Mitch is left upstairs fuming, and then he decides to go after her to talk to her some more. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Lois is shot. Um, she is a, a guy, a stranger comes up to her to ask her if her name is Lois Gilbert. She says she has, and he pulls out a gun and shoots her and critically wounds her. Um, uh, Mitch sees the shooter, and he runs after him, but uh, he doesn't catch him. He jumps on a car, and he dashes away, but the cops are there. And of course, they arrest Mitch for the uh, for the shooting. Uh, at the hospital, we find out that Lois is in critical condition; she could lose the baby. That her parents didn't know that she was pregnant because um, she's in a coma, and they're gonna have to make a decision, you know, whether to abort the the fetus or not. She's in, she's only in her first trimester. The little little sister of Michelle. Uh, she sees Hawk, and she, she had uh, had, uh, had helped Hawk had helped him out earlier. So this little girl Michelle walks up to Hawk and says, "I need you know I need to talk to you." And so Hawk and the little girl they talk, and he says, "Well, Mitch is a really not good guy. He, he loves my sister. He wouldn't do anything to hurt her. You know he's you know he, he's a little stressed, but you know not he wouldn't hurt her." So Hawk gets involved in the case, and um, yeah, uh, Mitch is a hothead, but he, you know, he, he seems to have a good heart. He just has to learn how to, you know, he has to be a little, little bit more mature. So, uh, and sure enough, uh, things start to happen. Uh, people start taking pot shots at, at, at them and, uh, um, and uh, trying to get rid of uh, Mitch and Hawk. Um, and the first shootout, Hawk... <laughs> uncharacteristically is shooting wildly i was really dis disconcerted by that scene because it it really did not play into the character at all uh he has he has a, his handgun has a limited range and he's shooting way down the alleyway um excuse me um i did really like that scene that really wasn't how hawk would have treated that uh you know he would have gotten a lot closer and you know and taking his time, it just seemed a little bit out of character. But later on, he does get into another firefight, and um, he kills two would-be assassins. He kills one that got the jump on him and Mitch, and uh, 
he kills him and then he uh, shoots the other one uh, causing him to crash into a car and this car catches on fire and, and Hawk runs over there and saves his life and also rescue a package that Lois had uh, had mailed to herself and that Mitch and Hawk had recovered and we find out that her dad who is supposed to be owning this company computer chip company is mere as a mere front uh, uh, he's he's uh, uh, Lewis's dad, uh, Frank Gilbert, is, is supposed to be his company, and they're supposed to be gotten uh, con uh, contracts from the U.S. government for a minority-owned company, but it's just a front, uh, and a, a, an evil guy named Stan is the one that's running it, and uh, he is also the one that is uh, he. They have made us a, a bunch of really bad chips. And they don't have time to go back there to make new chips before the contracts do. So they're, they're shipping what they have. And it could cause a lot of problems to anything the ships are installed in. So, and then we, uh, uh, Frank finds out that uh, his pal Stan also had his daughter shot. So he wants a little bit of revenge. So it all culminates in at the end scene, in, in the final scene where Frank draws down on on Stan when Stan's trying to get away from the uh, get away uh, uh, via the helicopter um, of course Lois recovers uh, she wakes up from the coma she gets to keep the baby and her and Frank, her and Mitchell end up having um, hopefully somewhat of a decent life I don't know about her dad her dad will probably end up going to jail for defrauding the government so no no all in all not a really not, a, not the perfect upbeat bend ending. Um, so, all right. So, let me, I'm going to tell you what I really thought about this episode. Um, and I really hate to say this, too, considering that I love the other ones. But this was all bad. Um, this, this wasn't the story that was bad. It was the score. I don't know who decided to make the music the way they did in this episode, but it was all wrong. Oh, it, it just puts you off the episode. It's 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 freeform jazz from the beginning to damn near the end of the sh of the movie, of the show episode, and it makes no sense at all. Horrible, horrible musical choice. In fact, I can't remember the last time I saw a TV episode. With worse, with a worse score than this one, um, I mean, maybe you take the jazz off the off the episode. That's fine, but when you put it inside of a action episode, it, it, oh, it's just it was terrible. Um, really, yeah, the story was the story was pedestrian. Um, to to tell you the truth, um, it was pedestrian. Um, there was no you know, there's no magic, like, like you know, no uh, interesting quirks or, you know, or, you know, from uh, Hawk. Uh, old Man did not make an appearance into, the, into this episode. Uh, that hurt it as well. Uh, at least when Hawk got into the second firefight, he actually hit somebody for a change, so that was good. I know they aired at 8 o'clock, so they couldn't have Hawk run around putting holes in all the bad guys, but... You think that with that big ass 357 Python, at least he hits somebody at least once an episode. I mean, he, but I uh, neither here or there. Um, I, I'll tell you the highlight of the of this episode though, and I feel so bad just talking down about it because it's, but the score is just oh, just no. Um, but this episode is star packed. Uh. Here's some of the names that are in this. I'll tell you who you know you might remember them from. Uh, Tatiana Ali, who played in the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, she played uh, uh, young Michelle. She was like ten years old when when she came onto the show. So Tatiana Ali was one of her early roles. She plays Michelle, the evil Stan, none other than Paul uh, Goyfoil, Guyfoil, who played Jim Brass on CSI Vegas, played a cop. Uh, wait till you see him here. Oh, <laughs> you won't even recognize him. It's it's a trip. Uh, he, I didn't even recognize. In fact, if I had not known that's who that's who it was, I wouldn't have recognized him. 
Um, Tim Gunny was in this uh, uh, this uh, uh, episode, and he's been in everything, absolutely everything. Some of you guys might remember him more as the familiar in Blade. He played the cop that uh, was going to kill Blade and uh, uh, and because uh, he was a familiar, and then uh, Blade him smacking them all around. Uh, it was a uh, he was a uh, uh, Stephen Dorse familiar. Deacon Frost is familiar. All right. Uh, we also had uh, Cassie Lemons, who played, uh, he, she played Lois. And uh, she also went on to do some other things, too, including a, uh, she ended up doing a Hard Target with uh, John Claude Van Damme, John Claude Van Damme and uh, Yancey Butler, uh, Lance Henriksen, and Arnold Vosloo. She, she played a, uh, a police officer in that, in that, uh, in that movie. Um, and we also had a, a, a cameo appearance playing himself, uh, was Thomas Hitman Hearns. Uh, he's credited as Hitman, um, but it, it was just a cameo for him, so he got a couple of lines in the movie. He was sparring, they showed him sparring, and him and Hawk were, were talking to each other a little bit, but he didn't come into the story at all. It's just, uh, you know, Thomas Hearns was really hot, really popular at the time, so you throw him onto the show, you know, stunt casting. But all in all, though, this was a lot of fun. This, I mean, as far as the casting goes, seeing all the familiar faces, um, especially especially Paul Goyfoyle, Guy Foyle. I mean, that was just like, because I've seen him as Jim Brass and on all the CSIs, and he's been great. Um, so this ends the series. Uh, uh, for the most part, outstanding. I recommend it. You know, I, I hope to hell that it comes out on home release sometime soon. I know that's probably a really, uh, you know, that's just probably just wish right there. But uh, I really enjoyed doing this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I, I might be taking a week break. Uh, I might do a movie or something like that. But we will be back. We will be back with uh, To Be Tuesday. Um, and we will be covering another TV show, uh, a short run series from 1982 called Tucker's Witch. Uh, which stars uh, Tim Matheson and uh, the lovely Catherine Hicks. Uh, if you're new to the channel, you like what you hear with Man of Color Hawk, thank you so much for coming in and watching it and supporting it. Uh, it seems like every episode got a little bit popular, more popular as I went on, so I really do appreciate you guys coming out there and watching it. Um, it's a good it's a good series. And, of course, if you're a huge Star Trek fan, of course, you're going to watch, watch Avery Brooks here. Uh, he also did the three seasons of Spencer for Hire, but he also did seven seasons of uh, Star Trek D Space Nine. All right, so if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the sub button, uh, hit the notification bell, and then uh, drop a comment. Comments are really critically important to the channel. They help the algorithm. Is, it basically is telling, the, is telling YouTube that I have interaction on my channel. So uh, when you do leave a comment, that really does help. All right. Uh, we will be back, uh, let's see, it is Saturday night, Sunday morning. We will be back tomorrow night on the Midnight Society, uh, me and Betty J. Gathers. We are taking a look at John Wick 1, the first John Wick. We are going to look at that. That's right. Uh, I've never seen it before, so we're going to do a deep dive on it tomorrow. And, um, yeah, we'll hope to see you there. And, um, we'll talk to you soon. Peace.